come across these headlines recently. UNESCO declares Modi as the best prime minister. <laughs> Pakistan approves Mandarin as an official language. Jack Sparrow's character was inspired by Lord Krishna. <laughs> and a gold-plated car was bought for industrialist Ambani's daughter-in-law. So what's common to all these headlines? They are 100% fake or false. But it doesn't end there, it gets worse. In the last two years, we've been grappling in India with a terrible phenomenon called WhatsApp killings. Over 33 people have died because they have been killed by rampaging mobs on the suspicion of being child kidnappers over rumors spread on social media platforms like Facebook, WhatsApp, ShareChat, and others, which add up to something like 500 million subscribers. In Karnataka, earlier this year, a young engineer working for Accenture was driving through a village along with his friends. He was pulled out, beaten up, and killed on the suspicion of being a child kidnapper. In Assam, two youngsters driving in an SUV were similarly pulled out after being stopped and killed by a, village, by a mob in a village on the suspicion that they were child kidnappers. India must be the only country where social media has led to rumors which have led to such brutal murders and killings. Have a close look at this video. This is the video that has perhaps led to more deaths than any other video in recent times. Every day brings to us hundreds or even thousands of real sounding messages. Wonder cures for cancer, fake news about banks, communally sensitive fake news aimed at creating divisions in society and violence, and combination pain medicine that kills. And yes, there's plastic rice and potato chips that catch fire. Last year, the entire internet, not just the social media platforms, were awash with rumors about state-owned banks shutting down. None of them have, as yet. But try telling that to a 60 or 70-year-old pensioner whose life savings are locked up in a fixed deposit in one of those banks. Earlier this year, in the monsoons, the state of Kerala in southwest India was hit by floods. But more than the floods, more than the hundreds of people who died, more than the billions of dollars of destruction that happened, what made news was fake news. Every hour, there would be videos, posts, WhatsApp forwards of dams bursting, animals being swept away, and donations being promised when they clearly were not. For the hundreds and thousands of people who were living away, the near and dear ones, trying to find out what was happening in Kerala, you can understand the anxiety that these, these people were going through. So how did we get into this? Well, we at Boom, we're a bunch of fact-checkers based in Mumbai, started noticing the early trends in 2016 towards the end, just ahead of the US presidential elections. It turned out later that they were enterprising youngsters sitting in Macedonia, writing and creating blatantly false content and putting it on the internet with the objective of generating traffic and ad revenue. These messages and posts and websites were not debunked by mainstream media as they perhaps could have. So, these posts about Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump <laughs> were shared and believed. What made it worse was that people using technology from the now defunct Cambridge Analytica used, used targeting in a way that they could reach the people who they knew were willing recipients. And we're talking about tens of millions of people. So the question could be, why does false news get believed so easily? Well, the answer, or at least one of the answers, is speed. Velocity creates veracity. We believe because we receive these messages from the people we hold nearest and dearest to us, our friends and family. A study by the MIT earlier this year of 126,000 posts tweeted three million times showed 
that false news travels faster, deeper, and further than true news. And it's more novel. So what incentivizes people? Why would someone create all this could be the next question. Well, it turns out that for some people, there is a business model. Political parties do it because they use it to sow seeds of distrust and prejudice ahead of elections, as we are seeing today. In the world of business and finance, stock prices could be moved up and down. As a company or an e-commerce company called Infibeam found out, when their stock price was hammered 71%, thanks to rumors on WhatsApp that questioned their financials. So how do we at Boom bust fake news, might be our next question. Well, we have three stages. First, research. We use a lot of data, and we do number crunching. The second, we use technology and tools, very simple ones, like Google reverse image search, which I'm going to talk about more. And finally, there's good old-fashioned journalism. We call up people, we talk to them, we get statements on the record. So let me show you two examples. Let's go back to Kerala at the time of the floods. The story and a video about people lining up to buy alcohol. They were indeed lining up. So we zoomed in on these images, went closer, found out the names of the establishments that you could see there, did various Google searches, and called them, and got statements on record asking them or saying what this line was about. Well, yes, there was a line, but it was to buy something more even scarcer, that's petrol. A fire in a refinery in Mumbai. We froze frame the images, did a Google reverse image on the still frames, and found that, yes, there was a fire in a refinery, but that was in Mexico. So what is the way forward? Is this going to change, or can it get worse? Well, we don't know, because the people who spread fake news have a definitive, definite motive and a profitable motive to do it, as I said earlier. But we've also found in our experience that pushback works. In the last year, we've called out a whole bunch of politicians, social media influencers, and even mainstream media organizations for peddling or di distributing evidently fake news. Shashi Tharoor, many of you are fans. Paresh Rawal, Kiran Bedi, Babul Supriyo, and then some of the news organizations. We find that as we've pushed back, Many of these organizations or individuals are far more careful today about what they tweet or retweet or endorse. And to that extent, it works. We also work with organizations like Facebook. What we do is to put a strike on stories that have been flagged as false news by users of Facebook. And when we put a strike, which means that we've established it as, as fake, Facebook throttles its distribution, ensuring that more people don't read it. So the battle continues. Earlier this year, we launched a WhatsApp helpline. Do take it down. And we've been flooded with posts and forwards, and uh, you can guess what. So much so that we're not even able to respond to all of it. The good news in some ways is that we are not alone. Local police in many parts of India are also using the same social media that they're battling with to spread awareness and education. But the battle is a little bigger, and it's actually within us, because the law will not prevent information or misinformation from reaching you or the mobile phones that you carry. So the good news that I take away at some times is that younger people are a little more perceptive and careful when it comes to misinformation. But this is a mind battle. It's going to take five or 10 years before we win it. And we win it, we will. Because all of you, that's you and me, are as much creators as we are consumers of content on this dynamic internet. So the next question is, what can you do to fight this menace? Well, I've got four tips. First, if it's about a miracle cure for cancer, remember that it's not going to first land in your WhatsApp inbox, right? You're going to see it all over, find a trusted media organization. Second, please be skeptical and disbelieving about videos and images in general, and it's going to get worse. Use Google reverse image search. We use it. It's simple to use. It works beautifully. Third, and importantly, teach children about the internet. It's not all that it seems. 
learn how to build trust, learn how to use information carefully, and to, have, to be careful and disbelieving when, when the time comes. And finally, if you have people sending you fake messages frequently, and it's upsetting you, please return it to them with compliments. Thank you.